Okay, so I haven't done this for a while. I think it's about time I continue. Um, I had made a series of videos on Britain's Prime Ministers, starting from Walpole and going right through to Cameron. So, um, to continue, um, George Grenfell, Prime Minister number seven. Um, I'm going to give a bit of information directly from uh, the Downing Street website. Um, Grenfell was uh, a Whig and he served from 1763 to 1765 um, and there's some information about him he was born in 1712 in Wotton in Buckinghamshire and uh, he was descended from a political family uh, this is from the Daniels website he had a perfect prime ministerial pedigree however he was not a success due to King George III's dislike of him he had to govern under the widespread perception that the king was still listening more to the advice of his predecessor, Lord Bute. At first, he was also handicapped by the difficulty of having George III intervene in parliamentary affairs. Eventually, he gave the king an ultimatum which secured him greater independence in his role. He experienced many problems during his premiership. His prosecution of MP John Wilkes for, sed for, pardon me, for seditious libel against the king and the Earl of Bute made him unpopular and he was seen as a threat to the liberty of the people and the press. He attempted to regain favour by lowering domestic taxes at the expense of the colonies, introducing the Stamp Act of 1765. The laws gave rise to widespread protests in America that eventually boiled over to the war for independence. Bear in mind this is still a good 15-20 years before the war of independence. Um, there was also a riot by English weavers protesting against imported silk, for which George I blamed him. Sorry, George III blamed him. Grenville's fate was sealed when he fell out with King George III over the matter of who should rule for the king in the event of a deterioration of his mental health. Grenville tried to remove Queen Caroline, the king's mother, from the list because of her friendship with Lord Bute, which said to the king sacking him in 1765, a rare event in British history. Grenville died of a blood disorder in 1770. So what we see here in George Grenville was a man very much handicapped by the politics of his time. That's my reflection anyway. It is important to note that uh, to international viewers you might think, oh well the king sort of looks like he really interfered and the truth is he did. He interfered in politics. At this point Britain was technically a constitutional monarchy so at this point the king did not have absolute power. Um, so, with all of Britain's Prime Ministers, there's been a situation since Walpole onwards whereby they've been dealing with a constitutional monarch. However, in the early years, especially in the reign of King George III, um, it was quite commonplace for the monarch to interfere in politics. That's something that would be unthinkable today. So, quite often there were Prime Ministers handicapped by this fact. Um, some important things that happened in Grenville's time. Um, he was only in office for two years, but in that time there was the Navy Act of 1758. I should say this includes probably his ministerial time. The Navy Act 1758 to speed up the payment of seamen's wages and enable them to send a portion home to the families. The Stamp Act 1765 required all legal documents, licenses, commercial contracts, newspapers, pamphlets and playing cards to carry a tax stamp. The Parliamentary Elections Act 1770, aka the Grenville Act, transferred the power of acting, sorry, transferred the power of trying election petitions from the House of Commons to a small committee of MPs selected by lot. Some interesting facts about uh, George Grenville. Uh, as we've already established, King had a rocky relationship with him, and this is the quotation from George III. When he has wearied me for two hours, he looks at his watch to see if he may not tire me for an hour more. Um, and this is a quote from Granville. A wise government knows how to enforce with temper or to conciliate with defeat. Now, Granville was one of a group of politicians known as Cobham's Cubs, uh, who were influenced by Lord Cobham. Uh, another one of Cobham's Cubs, uh, by the way, Granville was the nephew of Lord Cobham, but another one of Cobham's cubs was uh, the Earl of Chatham, better known as William Pitt the Elder. Pitt the Elder. So this was an influential group of politicians in the mid 18th century. Um, so that's what I can say about George Grenfell. Like I say, he died in 1770 in London of a blood disorder at 58.
which sounds young by today's standards, but by the standards of the time that was relatively normal. Um, his term entirely coincided with the Seven Years' War, um, or at least I should say it began at the start. Uh, his, the start of his term was the very end of the Seven Years' War. So that is uh, George Grenville. By the way, I should mention that he is uh, one of the first Prime Ministers to have not been a Lord or a Duke or an Earl. He was just basically old George Grenville. So that in itself is something quite significant.